praise the Lord again. Amen. 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 Thank God. Amen. For blessing us being in the house of God tonight. Amen. Always a pleasure, amen, to be in God's house, uh, reading God's word, studying God's word, teaching God's word. Amen. So that we can gain more knowledge of what God desires for our life and what God's will is in our life. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for all those that are streaming in tonight. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. We thank God for you that God has been able to bless us. Amen. With our broadcast so that we can get the word out so that you can be streaming in with us, uh, those that are far, even those that are near. Amen. Any questions tonight? Give me a little bit more uh, volume there, David, please. Any any questions tonight about what we've been dealing with, what we've been talking about? All right. If not, let's go to uh, the book of Luke, chapter 5. I believe we left off there. Is that right? Yes. Is that Luke, chapter 5? I think we read it all, but let me just... Uh, let's just... Uh, We'll read that again real quickly. We'll go through that. Right. Luke 5, 17 through uh, 26. Luke chapter 5 and verse 17 through 26. If you've got it, say, I've got it. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 5 and at verse number 17, it says, And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching, there were Pharisees and doctors of the law, by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was was what? Present. Was present to heal them. Amen. That's what we want. Amen. In every single service that we have, we want the power of God, amen, to be present in every service uh, for deliverance, for healing, uh, for everything that we need in our spiritual walk and in our spiritual journey with God, amen. It's so important um, to have that because not only do we need deliverance, but there are people that come in that need deliverance. And the truth of the matter is, is we really don't know what people are going through. Imagine that. We really don't know what people are going through, amen. And so it's so important for us, amen, to always be on one accord. <coughs> All right. Let me ask you this. When does an individual prepare for service? For the worship? When does one, let me ask it this way, let me be more specific. When do you begin your preparation for Wednesday and for, for Sunday to come to the house of the Lord? When you wake up. When you wake up on Sunday morning? Yeah. When you wake up on Sunday morning? Daily. Anybody else? Throughout the week, it's daily. Throughout the week? Anyone else? Have you ever even thought about it? Has it, it hasn't even crossed your mind that we need to prepare ourselves before coming to worship service? Huh? Are we here tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone tired? Yes, it's midweek. It's hump. Hump what? Hump Wednesday? Hump day. Hump day? Yeah. Right? Tomorrow's Thursday and then Friday and the weekend we get to enjoy a couple of days off. Okay? This is very important for you and I to think about these things. That we prepare each and every day. That's what our devotion is all about. Amen? Amen. So when we come on Sunday, guess what? We're already in tune with God. Amen? Amen? That's part of the church being on one accord. Now I know we go through the, the, through the hustle and bustles of life. Amen? And the day-to-day -day routine and, and uh, work life and all these our home life, our family life, and whatnot, and all these things, amen. But even with that, we still, amen, need our devotion time with God, getting our minds right. Praise God. Because if we don't get our minds right, and if we don't prepare mentally 
And spiritually, when we assemble ourselves together, guess what? You are not only robbing other people's blessing, but you are robbing yourself from getting your own blessing. Amen. Amen. It's something, praise God, that we have to uh, prepare ourselves on a daily basis. Amen. So that when we come collectively, we are on what? We are on one accord. In one place, worshiping that one God. Amen. The creator. The sustainer. The giver of life. Praise God. And when we as the body of Christ and as the church of the living God, amen, prepare to get our minds spiritually and mentally connected with God. Each and every, listen, don't worry about the next person, worry about yourself. When I prepare myself, what does that mean? That means that you and I, we have to fight through, amen, our whole life. We have to, now I'm not saying that we need to abandon our responsibilities. We still have to maintain Amen. And take care of our responsibility. But what I am saying is that we need to depend on God to help us get through every peaks and every valleys of things that you and I go through in the home, in the church, in the school grounds, and yes, even at our jobs. Amen. The influences, praise God, that you and I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis Amen. It brings challenges. Understand. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm very big on simplifying my life. The more simplified or the more simple my life is, amen, the less distractions that I have. The less distractions that I have, the more focused I can be. The more focused I can be, praise God, the more in tune. I am with God. The more in tune I am, amen, with God, amen, the more spiritually and mentally, amen, I prepare myself. So when it comes to praising God and when it comes to worshiping on Sunday, amen, guess what? I don't have to fight through everything that I have gone through throughout the week, Monday through Saturday. Are you with me? Amen. I've been fighting those things all each and every day. So when Sunday comes, guess what? The burden is light. Hallelujah. The load isn't as heavy. But if I am not fighting those things Monday, Tuesday, listen, we fight every single day with some challenges in our life. Whether they're spiritual challenges or whether they are natural challenges, we fight every single day. And guess what? If you're not fighting today about something, amen, spiritually or naturally, if you're not fighting on Tuesday, guess what? All that junk piles up and when it comes on Sunday, guess what? You can't even get your breakthrough in church because you just got all this stuff piled on you rather than what? You know, it's, it's, like, it's like doing your work at job or whatnot. You know, some folk, they do their job and get it out the way. Is that right at work? Some people, they just get in there, hustle, bam, bam, stuff that they don't like, amen, and get it out of the way, and then they kick back the rest of the, uh, uh, of the day. Sometimes at work, amen, we work hard Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, sometimes on Thursday, on Friday, it's a kickback because we got all our work, uh, uh, all of our work done throughout the week. And then you just got some individuals, they just wait till the last minute to get their stuff done. And now let me take it on another uh, level. Some people wait until to do their schoolwork the night before when it's due. And what happens? You're sitting there, you're trying to study, you can't study, you become frustrated. Because you're not finishing your project in time, the next thing you know, you just throw stuff together, and then you get a D, and you be like, or an F, and you're like, yeah, why I get an F? I mean, what you expect? You didn't put no time in. Amen. And it's the same way with God. Amen. You can't expect God to bring us an A, amen, and you doing D and F work, or D and F effort. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. amen. If we want the best from God, then guess what? God, listen. God is always going to give us our best, his best. 
But the question lies, are we giving God our best? Amen. What is our devotion like during the week? Hmm? We don't have to spend, amen, hours, you know, five hours a day in prayer. I mean, if you're doing five hours, then praise be to God. Amen. There are many things that we can do in our devotions. Amen. Walk in the street talking to people. Walk in the street praying for people. Amen. Reading our word. In prayer. Amen. There are so many things, amen, that you and I stay connected with God. Why do we do these things? I know I, I, I'm not digressing from our subject here. Amen. Understand, trying to get us on one accord so that the power will be come together. Amen. The power of God is present, not only to heal, as the Bible says, but the power of God is present to do whatever God, amen, number one, needs to do, and number two, do the power. We need the power of God, amen, for whatever the people have need for, need of. That's right. Okay? So we do these things, read our devotion and all that, you know, whatever your devotion is. We do these things, praise God, amen, that's one of the ways that we're fighting off in that obstacles and, 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 and difficult situations in our life. Yeah. The more we read, guess what? What happens when you are reading the Word of God? Most of the times, amen, the less spiritually uh, 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 demonic attacks you experience. Sometimes, amen, we're trying to read. Sometimes trying to pray. Pray sometimes. I mean, we fight to pray, don't you? Yeah, that's right. Amen. You fight to pray. Sometimes, amen, you, you fight through prayer and you try to fight some sleep. I mean, you just woke up. You're in prayer. You want to sleep. But you got to push your way. Amen. This is part of the fighting, knocking stuff off, amen, that you and I are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Praise God. And so when you and I as individuals take care of these things on our own time, then when we come together collectively, amen, as a people of God, as the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and at verse number 25, forsake not the assembling of yourself, amen, as a matter of some, some is, you know, don't forsake this. When we come together, amen, for corporate worship, corporate prayer, amen, when we come together, guess what? We should already be on one accord with him because the truth of the matter is we can't be on one accord with each other if you ain't on one accord with him. And when we are on one accord with God, listen, it doesn't matter what everybody else is. As long as everybody's on one accord, guess what? We're on one accord, sending up the praises of God, amen, upward, not thinking about our problem, not thinking about what happened throughout the week, amen. Listen, let me, let me tell you, let me just say something. When I come, amen, into the house of worship, the outside world, it doesn't exist. Whatever happened out there, it does not exist in my mind. It's there. Whether things good or bad, it really does not exist because you know what? This is my time to connect with God so that I can get something. This is my time to connect with God, not only that I can get something, so that somebody else can get something. You have to understand this. You and I collectively, as a body of Christ, if we refuse, amen, to connect with God, sometimes, listen, I'm talking about those of us that are connected, those of us that are saved, those that are in the body of Christ, you and I have the power to hold somebody else's blessing by simply refusing. Listen, if you are not on one accord with God, that means that you're not praising and worshiping God. Because if you want to accord with God, guess what? Praise and worship is there. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Now I'm not. Now I'm not saying. I'm not insinuating, and I'm not saying that what we go through don't have an effect on our life. It does. It does. What I am saying is, is that we have to learn. Praise God to put our faith and our trust in God to fight through those things. Amen. Because you know what? 
because I need deliverance. There's no need for you and I to be dealt, dwelling on problems that we have no control and that we cannot fix. But we need to dwell on what God can do. What he is able and what he is faithful of doing. One of my favorite scriptures, and I quote this all the time in the book of Ephesians chapter 3, and I believe that verse number 20, and it's one of the scriptures that we'll get there, I uh, will get to. That uh, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could think or ask according to what? According to what? Let's turn it. Ephesians chapter 3. It's on your... Oh no, it's not on your head now. <coughs> As a matter of fact, because we started off in Luke and we finished that off, right? Let me, let, let me just finish reading it. Number 18, go ahead and go to um, Ephesians chapter 3. Listen, he says, and behold, men brought in a, in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy. Oh, hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Forgive me. Let's go back to Luke because there was something that I wanted to pull out of here. Something that I wanted to, to, to remind us of. Okay, we're still dealing with this and then we'll go back to Ephesians chapter 3 beginning at verse number 14 through 20. Y'all remember, help me uh, to maintain my thought. <clears throat> okay, verse number 18, we got it. It says that, Behold, men brought in a, a, in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tilling uh, with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith. He said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. The scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is easy to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the policy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up that couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them, and took up that whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. What was that thing? What was one of the key things here we talked about last week? With his friends bringing him in that he was sick. They couldn't get in because it was crowded. They brought him down through the moon. Huh? They were determined. Right? They were consistent. They were consistent. They were determined. Amen. And that's what you and I have to, have to be. Amen. Is we have to be determined and we have to be consistent. Amen. And one of the things I want to say before we move on to the book of Ephesians is that even though, praise God, we may not get our blessing, we may not get our healing, we may not get whatever it is that we desire from God, amen, it is imperative for you and I to be consistent. Let me say that again. It is imperative that you and I be consistent and that we are determined Amen. To not give up just like these men were. They were determined. Amen. In their hearts. Amen. To bring their friend down where the power of God was present. How many, how many of you do believe that the power of God is here? In our senses. We have to be determined. We have to be consistent. There are folks that you and I know, praise God. Amen. This is another thing, amen, that moves God. Just because the healing isn't taking place doesn't mean 
that it can't happen. Just because someone hasn't had a significant healing here doesn't mean that it can't happen. So I say that to say this, that that should not prevent you and I from bringing any sick individual, our loved ones, amen, our friends, our co-workers that we know that need a healing touch from God. These folks, we won't, you read in the scriptures, we read in several of the scriptures, Amen. That there were other people that brought people that were sick. That other people's faith got somebody else healed. We see the centurion. He came to Jesus. Amen. I'm one other authority. Amen. And his authority. I tell people to come and they come. I tell them to go and they go. He said, Jesus, I need you to heal my servant. Jesus said, I'm going to come in. He said, no, Jesus, I just need you to speak the word. He had enough faith for his servant. His servant, I didn't even know that he went to Jesus. What am I saying? Amen. We've got to be consistent and determined. Amen. You may not have any physical issue that you may need some type of healing or a touch from God. But how many of us do know that there's somebody that is sick and that needs healing from God? Your faith can heal somebody else. Amen. Because guess what? God honors your faith in him. Amen. And when God sees our faith. Isn't that what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6? But without what? Faith. It is impossible to please God. Without faith, you and I cannot Please God. Impossible, the scripture says. But he said, but he that believeth in him, amen, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek God. He is a rewarder. Amen. So we have to be consistent that if you don't get what you need, amen, keep on being consistent. Keep on keeping on. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting God. Be determined. Amen. Get that drive going that God, you didn't bless me today, praise God. I'm still gonna keep on coming. I'm still gonna keep bless. I'm still gonna keep praying now. Amen. Hey, somebody. Did you have your hands up? Did you have a question? All right. Now let's go to the book of Ephesians. Thank you, Jesus. Give me uh Ephesians chapter 3 and at verse 14. If you got it, say I've got it. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14. Listen to what it says. He says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is made, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Hmm, I know. He says that Christ may dwell in your hearts. How? By faith. Things that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis, our devotion, our prayer, our reading, our fasting, our, 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 our connect groups, dwelling, letting the Christ dwell in our hearts by faith. Ooh, man, I'm getting something out of this one. That this would alleviate some of that pressure and pain that you and I go through. So that when Sunday comes, amen, we can be on one accord with God, amen, and one accord with each other. Praise God. So that, guess what? So that everybody can get a blessing from God. Listen, I don't want to just be blessed when I leave the church. I want everybody to be blessed. Huh? Amen, somebody. Amen. All right? Let's continue to go on here. He says that Christ will dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Man, I can, ooh, well, we can really go off on here you know, on, on, on with love because this, this is such a, a, a deep issue when he talks about loving God. Amen. Loving God. 
okay? No matter what, what you and I go through, the love of God has to be there. Love, faith, all that stuff, man, it all works together. Okay? But let me, let me continue to go on. He said, verse number 18, he said, may be able to comprehend with all saints, huh, what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. What is he talking about in verse number 18? That we may be able to comprehend with all the saints. What is the breadth, length, depth, and height? What is he talking about there? God's love. For us. Huh? God's love for us. His love for us? All right, what else? Hmm? Also I mean, anybody else? His knowledge, I guess. The knowledge of him? Mm -hmm. The things of life that you and I go through. Let's read that again, verse number 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height. Listen, this is why you and I need to be rooted and grounded. Well, number one, we need to have Christ dwelling in our hearts, he says. Right? And that you may be rooted and grounded in love because when God, when Christ is in our heart, when we are rooted and grounded in love, we will be able to comprehend and understand, amen, the depth, the height, the length, and all these things, amen, with the saints, what we go through in life. Praise God. This is what we Thank you, Jesus. Are, are you getting? Are you understanding this? What the, what the word is talking about? In other words, how many of us we go through hard times in life and we just don't understand? Huh? Do you want to understand? Yeah. Then you got to have Christ dwelling in your hearts. You have to be rooted and grounded in love. And he says, when those things happen, when Christ dwells in my, in my heart, and when I'm rooted and grounded, and listen, in the love of God, he says, I will be able to understand with all the saints the things that we go through. And when I understand the things that I go through, because Christ is in my heart, I'm rooted and grounded in the love of God. Hey Amen. Whatever I go through in my life, guess what? That's just part of the plan and the will of God. Hey Amen. Why? Because the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 and what? 28? <coughs> for we know that all things work together for what? For the good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Oh man, I like that. I have to pause because I'm trying. Ooh, I just got I just got a little nugget on that. I got a little revelation on that one. That the more I allow Christ to dwell in my heart. The more I'm rooted and grounded in the love of God, I'm not moved away from that love, but I understand that God loves me, that agape love, that unconditional love. The more I have that within me, the more my understanding becomes fruitful of why I go through the valley. Amen. Because it is part of the process. And God is making me. God is molding me. God is building me. God is creating me all over again. For what? To become more like him. Knocking off the rough edges. Now please don't, don't, don't think that amen is an easy thing to do. I'm not saying that it's easy. It's part of the process as well. Remember what I said earlier? What do we have to do? To fight throughout the week. What do we have to do throughout the week? Say that again. Our devotion. Our devotion. How do we 
we start off our morning. Our devotion in God. Do we acknowledge God in the morning? Do we acknowledge Him when we have a plate of food? Amen. Do we acknowledge Him throughout the day? Amen. Man, when I think about what God has done for me, man, I, I can't, I can't just, I can't help but just stop and just say, Lord, I thank you. Man, I'm telling you, I am realizing in my walk with God. More and more. That man without God, man, I will be a mess. Mm -hmm. And I am blessed. I am blessed just to be saved. <laughs> I'm not talking about money card. All that is, that's the byproduct. That's not the product. The product is being saved. And I'm blessed just to know him. Amen. The Apostle Paul said it like this as he wrote to the church in Philippians. The third chapter, I believe. He says, whatsoever thing were gained to me, he says, I count them as dumb. That means that he counted as manure. Everything that he got. Now, now the Apostle Paul was a decorated theologian in his time. And he said, everything that was gained to me, he said, I count it but as dumb, as nothing, as manure. He says, why? That I may know him. And that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. Amen. Nothing else mattered to the Apostle Paul, amen, but for him to get a closer relationship with God. For him to get in tune with God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. For him, amen, to be connected on a constant basis with him. Because you have to understand, amen, Paul was kingdom minded and he saw souls that needed to be saved, amen. And so his life was wrapped up around God. His life was wrapped up around getting Jesus in his heart. His life was wrapped up about being rooted and grounded in love. Why? For the multitude and for the masses, not only for himself. Hallelujah to God. Listen, when you and I can think in terms of God, amen, bless my life so that others may be blessed. Not that so others can see how anointed I am. Not that others can see what I have. But God bless my life so that I may be a blessing to somebody else. God, help me to get in tune with you. Lord, help me, oh God, Lord, to worship you. Lord, help me, oh God, to be connected with you. Lord, give me that desire, amen, to be devoted to you. Give me that desire to be thankful to you. Because when I'm thankful to you, listen. Do you understand that when God blesses an individual's life, that when God, amen, has favor upon an individual, do you know that that becomes contagious and that it overflows and it rubs off on other people? Don't you know that? That people want what you got, amen, but guess what? There is a price to pay. All right. Thank you. The Apostle Paul paid the price. But you have to understand the price that he paid and the things that he gave up and the things that he sacrificed were, guess what? Amen. Many were blessed from it. You and I, in other words, cannot be selfish, amen, when it comes to the king, to the things, amen, of the kingdom of God. Why am I saved? Why do I preach? Why do I teach? Because, amen, I'm, number one, yes, I'm doing it because I want to stay saved. I'm doing it, praise God, because I want eternal life in peace, not in torment. I'm doing it, praise God, because I love God, amen, and the heart of God is for people. The heart of God is for souls. The heart of God, amen, is so that what? Whosoever will let him come. How do I know that? John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, I mean, he sacrificed, amen, the ultimate so that the lost can come to him. Not the righteous, the lost. 
those that are sick, those that are whole need not a physician, but those that are sick. Huh? Man, some good stuff here, y'all. Yeah. All right, so that we can comprehend. Be able to comprehend, understand with all strength what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Here it is. Verse number 20, now unto him, that is God, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we what? Ask, ask for what? Thing. According to what? Power. That where? Word. Where? Where is that power work? In us. In us. According to the power that worketh within us. What does that mean? God has given us the key. He has given us the power. And guess what? What is that power? What is that key? to faith. It's our faith in God. That's power. It's our faith in God that activates the power of God within our life. He is given and he says according to the power that worketh within us. Guess what? The power is already in us. Amen. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, it's already in us. The power that worketh within us and the way we activate that power, we turn that power by hitting the, the switch called what? Faith. faith. Oh, man. Hit that switch called faith, amen, and guess what? And that's why when we get on one accord, mm. when we're doing what we need to be doing throughout the week, mm. huh? Even waking up on Sunday morning, praise God. It's worship time. I begin on Saturday. I, be, I begin worship. I begin preparing my mind Saturday. All through the day, I, I mean, you know, even throughout the week, but even more so on Saturday. How's things going to go? Lord, help me. Praise God. Lord, I want to worship you. Amen. I want to be in tune with you. Lord, what will we have? What will you have for your people on tomorrow? Trying to collect my thoughts. Getting prepared for I'm already in worship. Sunday morning, praise God. All right. Rehearsal's done. It's time to get into the presence of God. God, who are you going to heal today? God, who are you going to save today? God, who are you going to deliver today? Amen, somebody. Amen. But if, listen, if we can all get on that one accord, there is no telling, but well, there is telling. <laughs> We got to stop saying that there is no telling what God can do. We know what God can do. There is telling what God can do. God can what? Heal the sick. He can raise the dead. He can cause the lame to walk. He can cause the dumb to talk. He can open up blind eyes. He can save. He can deliver. Listen, th there is telling what God can do. When you and I get on one accord, you have to understand. Let me encourage you. Read the book of Acts. Read it all the way through from Acts chapter 1 all the way through to Acts chapter what, 28? And you see the power and the manifestation of the early church. How God blessed. How they were on one accord. How they sacrificed. The things they gave up. Amen. Because they wanted more of God. And we have challenges here in, in, in America. We don't want to give nothing up. We don't want to give. We don't want to give up money. We don't want to give up time. We don't want to give. We don't want to give up nothing. But yet we want everything from God. We want everything from God. Amen. Man. But we don't want to give up nothing. You want to get close to God. How many here really want to get close to God? Sometimes getting close to God, amen, you got to strip yourself. Sometimes God strip you. Amen? Cause you to lose some stuff. I'm telling you what, the most times, amen, that I really connected with God, when, when I was without. When I didn't have no money, had no food, had no gas, had, had one car for a family of eight, family of seven, family of one. I mean, when you are without, 
You will. If you if you really if you really saved, then you really want to stay saved. It'll cause you to get connected to God. It'll cause you to get closer to God. 